Hello and welcome to another Doctor's Assistant 1 video. Today I'm doing a review of the brand new, uh, it's the 27th, no, 24th even, uh, 24th of July um, 2021 and uh, today I'm doing a review of the brand new um, Character Options exclusive TARDIS and Second Doctor from the 1967 a story the abominable snowman uh the abominable snowman even uh and that and uh yeah it's um it's a very interesting one uh you know it's also quite unique because it's the uh most recent sort of tardis exterior box release as well as the most recent uh, electronic one meaning that it does actually have like a light with sound effects and that you know whereas say uh, take the other one which was a B&M exclusive one uh, with the uh, fourth doctor in Pertwee costume I think this one came alongside with uh, this one doesn't have any you know sort of uh, stuff on the bottom but still has the sound thing and the panel there and stuff but just no actual sound effects are all like that so yeah I also just wanted to kind of compare the two um have a little bit of contrast in my review because I have watched uh Batman March's review of this set as well as uh Captain Jimmy Pie uh Captain Jim Jim Pie's um review on YouTube as well so um there are quite a few other reviewers who've reviewed this set already so probably not the first person to review it here on YouTube so but either way, um, I just thought I'd compare the two TARDIS exterior boxes as well because in going over what's new in this one will make it apparent the differences, I guess. Um, obviously, the first noticeable one is the uh, pull to or free for public use uh, sign, uh, and that is on the wrong side of the door. Now, this is accurate to the actual episode. Uh, they put the doors on after recording one of the episodes in season five uh, back on the wrong way around, and so for the foreseeable future of said season, season five, I think it will, uh, the TARDIS doors are on the wrong way around uh, and that so yeah like every other box has it on the left side whereas this one's on the right side so yeah which is a bit weird um yeah it's also got this very nice sort of weathered a uh, texture and effect here on the on the sign and that and likewise with the rest of the box it's got this sort of charcoaly sort of uh sort of a uh, white wash sort of ch charcoaly sort of effect on it uh, which makes it just feel a lot different. It's also quite a bit darker shade of blue um, compared to, say, one of the later models of the TARDIS. Uh, likewise with the sort of uh, police public call box sign, that's black with very faint white sort of text, uh, text uh, whereas that's almost the opposite with, whoa, with, um, with that box, with this one, it's uh, sort of a white background with a bit of grey sort of water colours almost with police public call box in black uh, whereas as I say on the sort of second doctor one it's almost different almost the the the, the inverse and the different different one pretty much the same on the back also to note the the, the sort of bases are quite different as well so this one is uh, this TARDIS is quite uh, taller the sort of third slash fourth doctor TARDIS is quite quite uh, bigger um, in height because of the base being quite a lot thicker and uh, chunkier whereas the sort of Pat Trouton one is a lot thinner so it's a, a little bit shorter and that um, in terms of the top of the uh, TARDISes they're very much the same except the uh, sort of light sort of um, sort of pieces and the top are slightly different where the blue sort of uh, sort of uh, bars are on the lights maybe this is because of the electronics or maybe it's actually because it's trying to be more screen accurate to the TARDIS back in the sort of 1960s design uh, and you've also got obviously the yellow sort of thing inside and that um, you've also got no handle uh, you've got the lock I mean the keyhole but you've not got any any door handle which is quite interesting uh, and that to me um, I do agree with the main common criticism of the box which is that the windows are quite a bit too clean uh, considering the whole TARDIS is quite sort of has this sort of um, 
Artex sort of uh, charcoal y sort of um sort of a uh, powdery sort of feel to it. Um you know, it 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 sort of is a bit weird and even they've gone to the lengths of having that sort of um sort of a bit weathered and, and a bit more scruffy. The the least they could have done to add more depth could have been to do the doors as well. Uh, it's a nitpick really, but yeah, it's 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 a bit odd because as well, like when you compare it to the third slash fourth Doctor Tardis, this one does have more of a sort of greyish effect. So I'd I'd almost like the windows to be swapped round, cleaner Tardis doors on this one, and then these muckier sort of darker grey uh, slash pebble dashed uh, windows on that on the second Doctor Tardis. Uh, uh, sort of model if that makes sense so yeah um i think the lamp on this this model on the third slash fourth doctor one is quite smaller as well and just a little bit you know like more sort of um what's the right word like condensed i suppose uh and that and and, and shorter whereas that one uh, the one on the second doctor one is quite taller as well um you also get the second Doctor in a fur coat, which I don't know if he wore the fur coat quite a lot in his run, or if he only wore it in the Avonable Snowmen and the Five Doctors, but in my mind, it's one of the more iconic variants of his costume, which is kind of weird, especially, as I say, if he only wore it, like, literally in the Five Doctors and the Abominable Snowmen. I feel like when I think of the second Doctor, I either think of him in the, the, the sort of black jacket and the checkered trousers and the sort of handkerchief and the Beatles haircut and the recorder and the sort of off-tilted um, sort of uh, bow tie and all that. Or, as I say, this fur coat version of him, you know. Um, you've got articulation with him moving sort of side to side with his head, but is limited by quite a lot of the the sort of other bits and that. The hands, I mean, the arms can go in at the, short, at the elbows and that and can do full 360 degrees. The hands can actually kind of move a bit, like, uh, like rotate a bit, but not much. The legs can go out at the knees, but again, are very much hindered by the fur coat. There's no foot articulation, which is a bit disappointing. The trousers look very nice with this sort of um, dark grey base with all the checkers, and then the bra black, I mean brown even, uh, shoes, and then the grey for the bottom soles, I suppose, and you've also got the blue collar and the bow tie underneath, and the very nice likeness to Patrick Trout. I reckon. I think it looks good uh, for a second Doctor sort of uh, variant, and that and uh, this sort of variant of the second Doctor leaked quite some time ago, so it is nice to have finally got another version of of the second Doctor, I suppose, uh, for those of you who are massive second Doctor fans. Uh, moving on to the main thing that we all want to see, which is the sound effects. got this light light it's very sort of a, a yellow light I don't know if that's really picking up on camera but yeah it's uh insane to me to think like it's been 10 10 years nearly or like anywhere between 9 and like 11 years since the last proper uh, electronic TARDIS uh, and that and it's really cool that you get as I say, a nice variant of the second Doctor. The doors do, of course, open, and there is a little spring sort of thing there as well to then do that with. One of the doors, the doors do open both ways. You can fit Pat Trown in there as well, so if for whatever reason you don't want him to be on display, you can hide him away uh, in the box forever, I suppose. You can... Oh, God. Uh, let me just... Get in the TARDIS, Doctor. Ah. Well, actually, I don't want to break this, so actually, I'll just leave it like that for now. But yeah, um, it's it's a very good sort of um, set. I think, for me personally, I wish it was ch cheaper, honestly. I think 
it would have been nice. I think it would have been a better set priced at sort of thirty, thirty-five pounds maybe. It's thirty-nine ninety-nine. It is exclusive to character options, so once they're at, they're done, and the once they're sold, they're sold. So if you're a big fan of the Second Doctor era, it's obviously a must-have. Or you just don't have that many uh, Second Doctor Tardises, because for example, I missed out on the uh, black and white War Games uh, Second Doctor Tardis box. So. I'm actually kind of happy that I didn't get that one now because that was the B and that was the B and M exclusive, uh, and that and I didn't get that one, and I was a bit miffed because then I checked eBay and obviously it was quite a lot of money on there, but this one then comes with like a proper variant, uh, uh, and uh, a variant and or version of the second Doctor that's quite significantly more sort of varied uh, than the one that came with that TARDIS. I think that one was basically just a normal second Doctor with a bit of scuffs and stuff to the trousers and the jacket, and that's about it, really. Uh, but the box was the main centrepiece, I suppose. Whereas in this one, although the figure is quite limited in terms of articulation, it's made up for, for the fact that you've got this huge, massive PVC sort of um, pla very sort of tough plasticky sort of uh, very nicely detailed fur coat that as I say is maybe not in as many Doctor Who stories as I'm maybe remembering but is quite iconic to either this story or as I say the five Doctors so you know um, and uh, and clearly the abom abominable snowmen and all the Yeti and that sort of era or that story in particular clearly had quite a bit of a lasting impact on the show or kids then that they thought, oh, when we bring back Troughton in the Five Doctors, let's have him in the sort of fur coat again, you know? Or maybe it was just maybe a choice that he made, because to be fair, I'm pretty sure the, the place where they shot both of those stories were like some places in Wales, and so they would have probably been cold. So it was more than anything a practical thing on Troughton's part to where, uh, you know, something is... Uh, you know, uh, snug and warm and wintry uh, sort of attire slash clothing, I suppose. So, yeah. And uh, it is nice that the Doctor can fit in the box uh, and our TARDIS box uh, whilst, you know, still donning his uh, fur coat, you know. Um, it's not that chunky that it, you know, makes it, uh, you know, not able to still have him uh, be in the TARDIS, you know, uh, in terms of the actual playset, as it were. Uh, and that, yeah. So I think this is a, a a very nice collector's piece, very cool. You know, it's nice that we're getting some more sixties duck too merchandise. I guess I'd like to say the sixties and seven, uh, the sixties and probably the eighties of classic who are probably the most underrated, or not most underrated, but most underrated in terms of action figure representation. Um, probably actually, yeah, the sixties the most, and slash, yeah, tied and or in a very close second is probably the 80s. But yeah, um, I'll be interested to see what the next character options exclusive is. This is the first sort of figure review that I've done in 2021 of a Doctor Who figure, action figure set. It's because it's the first one that's come out. They've not really released much of else in terms of B&M sets. So we all are hoping and praying that the release of this now means that there's going to be another, another uh, B&M wave in August or maybe September, November time, I don't know. Uh, but yeah, thanks for watching. Please do comment, rate and subscribe.